over there. Bobby pointed to the left across the river. I saw something in the trees. Billy looked over but didn't see anything. Probably a possum or something. Then Billy heard something in the brush. He froze. Bobby heard it too. I told you I saw something. Maybe a bobcat. Thunder cracked like a cannon above the boys' heads and made them jump. Bobby grabbed his pole and frantically reeled his line in. It was quickly growing dark and the wind was increasingly stronger. He watched Billy pull and tug at the line. It's almost free, Billy assured him. It's coming faster. Bobby looked at the other side of the river. Dang, there it is again. There's something over there, all right. Billy glanced across the river, but with the dimming light, he couldn't see anything even if it was there. He pulled his line harder. A twig snapped across the river. Both boys darted their gazes in that direction but saw nothing but darkening winds. Maybe it's him, Bobby teased. Stop it. Don't be stupid, Bobby. Billy slowly but deliberately reeled in the line. He pointed the tip of his pole toward the water to keep it from snapping with the weight of the mystery catch, and he kept turning the reel. A drop of rain fell on his forehead, mingled with the nervous sweat on his brow, and gave him another shiver. Hurry up, Billy, we're going to get soaked. I am hurrying, I don't want to break my line. The crow sounded loudly from across the river and shot straight up above the tree line as fast as an arrow released from a bow. The boys looked that way, knowing something was in the woods, just out of sight. Another branch snapped. What the heck is that? Bobby sounded nervous, staring into the encroaching darkness on the other side of the river. Billy didn't answer. He was absorbed in the blob he was dragging across the top of the murky water. Bobby looked out at the greenish-brown blob. You've got nothing but leaves. Let's go. Billy pulled the blob onto the edge of the bank and laid his pole on the ground. He moved toward the blob to dislodge his hook and noticed something shining in the blob. What is that? It's shimmering. What the... Another branch snapped across the river. Come on, Billy, we gotta go, now. Hold on, Billy said as he grabbed a stick and poked into the blob, separating the leaves and muck. Yes, there was something shining. Something gold. Thunder rumbled. A rustling sound came from across the river, making Bobby look in that direction again. Heavy, fat raindrops splattered on their heads, and dead leaves began to whirl around the banks of the river in the increasing winds. It's something round. The crow called noisily. Another twig snapped. It's a watch. Thunder roared again. On a cold chain... Lightning lit the sky in a jagged pulse for a few short seconds. The wind intensified. What is that? Bobby asked. It's a pocket watch. Billy reached down and rubbed the mud off the front of the watch. He cocked his head to the side and saw a single T embossed in the gold. Simultaneously, the thunder roared. The crow cawed. The rustle across the river grew louder. And to their right... A giant splash scared both boys into standing straight up. They stared, mouths agape, in the direction of the bridge. Right under it, the water rippled in a circle as if something very, very large had just been dropped off the bridge. Thunder rumbled again. The water rippled more. The boys froze. An inch above the water, in the center of the ripple was an eerie green glow. Instead of dissipating as they expanded, the ripple seemed to grow larger and higher in the ever-growing circle, as if the ocean tide was causing waves to come ashore. The boys didn't look at each other. They didn't communicate. They turned at the same time and ran away as fast as their feet would carry them. They didn't grab their fishing poles. They didn't look back. Lightning flashed while raindrops splattered the rocks, turning them from gray to brown. As the storm strengthened, the ripples inched up onto the bank, and little by little, 
pulled the gold pocket watch back into the murky depths.